Enjoy breathtaking, mouth-watering goodies. Everything from a snack to a delicious full meal. At our refreshment center, you'll find a large variety of goodies to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, or your sweet tooth. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Visit our refreshment center now. The show starts in five minutes. The show starts in four minutes. Show starts in three minutes. The show starts in two minutes. The show starts in one minute. the show. Hey. I'm back. I don't know about EBT yet. Shout out to the chat. Let me get this all set up again. Appreciate you guys for standing through that intermission. It's tough when you stream for a long time and you gotta piss like a racehorse and fill up your water. All right, man. I can see your PowerPoint or whatever it is. I don't know if I don't think he's here yet. Hit smash the like button, please. 130 people in the chat. That's pretty good, man. Okay, I'm back. All right, right on time. I'm I'm watching your screen so I can see that PowerPoint. Okay, are we ready to get? This is the We're main ready. event. Shout out to Big the main JT. event. All right, so well, let me spark this real quick. Ooh. All right. Ooh. 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 Hold on. Hold up. So, uh, yeah, main event, right? Hexen, the Hexen 2.0 Tarot. Uh, I think Drew mentioned some of it earlier about, like, it's hard to get. And it's yeah, super now I can't see your screen anymore. Am I, am I supposed to be able to see it? No, it's going to a lot to say. I don't know why it would shut off. Uh, Hold on, maybe because I'm running my camera or something. Let me see. I can see your cursor. 
but it's like gray. The screen is gray for me. It says its stream is running, but pause this preview. Uh, shit. Hold on. Let me uh, reshare here. <laughs> Caladan said, come on, Boomer. I saw your comment, Caladan. We were just talking earlier. She said she dated a guy that worked on airplanes, and one of those engines spit a guy out once. Chewed him up and spit him out. She said sucked him up. I thought she meant something else. <laughs> Like, there's that old video of an aircraft carrier, and I think it's an A6 intruder, and the guy gets <laughs> the guy gets pulled into it, and his uh, cranium helmet flies off and stops the turbines before it goes in, but, like, he's like a spaghetti noodle. He's just, <laughs> right into it. All right, I can see it now, so let's go. Okay, so, let's go. Okay, so, so what is this thing, and who who is this person that made it? Okay, so this is a custom tarot deck made by this person. Uh, her name is Suzanne Treister. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Um, but basically, this is straight off their website. Uh, Hexen 2.0 looks into histories of scientific research behind government programs of mass control investigating parallel histories of countercultural and grassroots movements. Hexen 2.0 charts within a framework of post-World War II U.S. governmental and military imperatives, the coming together of scientific and social sciences through the development of cybernetics, the history of the Internet, and the rise of Web 2.0, and increased intelligence gathering and implications for the future of new systems of societal manipulation towards a control society. So specifically what this deck is about, and we'll see some of the other things that she does, but specifically this deck uh, investigates uh, the people that were pivotal in the Macy conferences that ran through 1946 through 1953. Uh, and this was the combination of all the top uh, computer scientists of the time that were interested in trying to build essentially computer systems that could mimic what they believed the way that the human mind worked. Um, so it's tied in with a lot of different ideas. Uh, and then the deck goes into stuff like claims of anarcho primitism, uh, post leftism, Theodore Kaczynski, Unabomber, uh, transhumanism, all this kind of stuff. So, all this stuff's going to be tied in. So, the deck's based on actual events, actual people, histories, and scientific projections of the future, and consisting of alchemical diagrams, a tarot deck photo text works and a video and a website so so who is this lady susan trister she has a bunch of other super interesting works the the one other one that i found her from originally i believe was this is one called nato let me see my cursor nato the military codification system for the ordering of everything in the world it's actually it's like a it's like a it's a parody, but it's not like it's 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 kind of funny, but it's just how like there's essentially like a NATO <laughs> there's a NATO designation for essentially everything that there really is. Uh, it's a good one, but she also does a bunch of uh, time travel. Uh, there's no Hexen 1.0 that I know about, so it's kind of like um, my pet goat too, right? Like there. <laughs> Maybe they're like Hexen 2.0 might be the exoteric and there's a esoteric version of it that, you know, we're not privy to. I don't know. Um, either way, uh, big deal about her is that she was one of CERN's uh, main contributing artists. Um, and then actually tonight I went to go look at her CERN web page. And as of tonight, that site has gone under maintenance. So. Ooh. Not they, knew, they knew you were on to them. They knew it. So uh, CERN actually gave her like an award 
Um, and uh, what what the hell was it? Yeah, anyways, I don't know what it was called. But anyways, uh, the Collide Award. She was given the Collide Award um, for some artwork that she did for CERN. Uh, so she works heavily with CERN. Um, anybody that's followed me on IG knows that like I'd like to cover uh, the artist, particularly like from Fermilab, because they put out some pretty crazy esoteric kind of artwork and stuff and it's pretty cool to look at some of the stuff that they do i feel like the stupid like performance shit that they do you know is like their exoteric that serves exoteric religion and it's for for the masses it's for the you know triple six for the masses but uh no the i think oh there it's back never mind i was gonna say the screen went gray again but it's back I must be moving my cursor off and it changes it or something. It's QOC, uh, man. QOC messing with it. So, yeah, there's so, like, with this artwork that comes out of CERN and Fermilab, I, Fermilab's a little different because they don't do any kind of, like, real super overt uh, shows or anything. All their stuff is, is, is pretty occulted. Obviously, CERN, everybody knows about CERN. They have the big stupid rituals that everybody can see are obviously creepy, but but for and then they see right yeah yeah but then they hire these artists like that's a big thing in these programs is all these particle accelerator labs they all they all have artists um i don't know if she is a resident if she is a resident artist i don't know if that's the case but she does work directly with cern cern gave her rewards she's done projects for cern yada 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 so anyways, so she made this tarot to talk about the invention of the internet and, and things to come. Now so. it's gone gray again. There, it, went, it came back now. Okay, wait, hold on, show me. Is it gray now? No, now it is, right now. Whatever you what just did now? made it gray. What about now? What about it is now? not gray, no. <laughs> okay, all right, I figured it out. All right, so I picked out uh, a few cards from the... Major Arcana and a few from the minor. Um, and then, so we're just going to really just start at the beginning and we're just going to go through some of these. And a lot of them probably we can just bullshit about because we probably know some of it. And if not, if anybody has any questions, we can go deeper into them. Um, but the first one, it might go gray. No, nope, uh, it worked. Okay, so the main premise of the whole deck is this Macy, the Macy conferences. I know I, I so, studied that like a long time ago and I kind of forget about it, but it wasn't it like these guys like set up to basically create the internet in the future. Yeah. Um, if the, the, the big channel that did uh, some good docs on this was um, uh, true stream media. Um, Shout out to what? truth stream media. True Stream Media, uh, Minds of Men, I believe is the name of the documentary where they cover all the cybernetics, the Macy Conference, and then all these influencers um, that started this movement. I specifically on this one, I picked out all the cards that weren't uh, specific individuals, and I went with the, the broader topic cards in this deck, so... Obviously, we're not going to cover all of them, but so like the biggest one in this is this Macy conference. So um, there were some groups before this that were involved with uh, these ideas of uh, being able to collaborate science and uh, technology with the human, you know, experience. So transhumanism uh, and then the ability to. Um, implement these systems to be able to uh, create computer systems that would mimic the human brain. Uh, the other group before the Macy conference that was pivotal was uh, the ratio, the ratio click or I don't, they're called ratio it was out of England and they were with um, the uh, Royal Society. So, yeah, the Royal Society, you know, gave us people like Darwin and, and and whatnot. Actually, Darwin's grandson ends up being a pivotal guy that is in this Macy's conference. Um, one person in particular 
who's important to the whole thing is left out of this conference, uh, who's really the guy that ends up being the guy that kind of creates digital storage personal computers. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. But in general, one of the big things the conference is going to talk about is cybernetics. And so this idea of cybernetics, which uh, the etymology of the word supposedly tracks back to cybernetics, uh, meaning in Greek, to steer. So to be able to steer society. But in general, uh, the topic is just like how systems work, right? Like, so uh, there's there's multiple levels of what is um, cybernetics. So like your body is a cybernetic system because it, it, you know, it maintains homeostasis through a, through a system. The earth is a cybernetic. All these uh, computer systems are cybernetics. Yada, yada, yada. The guy that invents this topic really or promotes it from the get go is uh, Norbert Wiener. That's right. <laughs> Norbert Wiener. Norbert, is it an, any relation to Anthony Wiener, a.k.a. Polly Shore? Most likely. Most likely. We you know we're going to, pigeon peckers are going to weave through the whole narrative. We already know this, but. Coincidence. Coincidence. So the. <laughs> this, is even, this is even funny though because I mean we've postulated before that we think that the AI is just some juvenile system and they choose names like Wiener to put into these storylines right? <laughs> just because they're making stupid joke, high school jokes or whatever which actually this when you dive into this kind of ideas of, of this early cognitive science these are kind of things that are coming out of it so anyways so the High Priestess card is the Macy's Conference. All right, it's gray now. Wait, it's there. It's there. I'm not... You fucking it up. I'm sorry. So anyways, the card just says a bunch of the people that are involved with it. Uh, I guess uh, the connections you could make. Uh, what do you got you going wanted... on? It's kind of hard to see. Let me Let me pull it up on the... So the chat can see it better and make it bigger. I'm gonna pull it up on the um, the, just the regular browser. High Priestess Hexen. Yeah, here it is. Okay, yeah, much better picture here, for the chat to see. So I see a pedo swirl, man. Pedo swirl. It's a wrap. Yeah, we definitely got a pedo swirl in there. Um. Bright Beekman's Tower, Beekman's World. <laughs> exactly. Was that so the joke what... of Beek? Who is Beekman's of Beekman's Tower? I've never heard of that. Uh, I actually don't know anything about that. Uh, that's where the conference took place. I don't know anything oh, okay. about the, the location. There's a lot of information in every one of these cards, and admittedly, I don't know. You don't know all of it, but uh, so the the basis of this is outlining the major influencers in each one it, that were in the uh, that were involved with this. You see Wiener, Norbert Wiener, right there above Beekman Tower. But tell me when you switch slides or whatever, because I'm just watching it on the on the browser now. Yeah, yeah, that's so better yeah, if you just. Yeah, you got the word, the word wiener right next to this, like, phallic tower. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, this is a group of people that got together to, uh, you know, all these people from all these different branches of science get together to... Um, one of the big things is really the idea of creating sustainability, uh, being able to use technology to solve the problems that humans created in the world um so basically all the things that we're kind of dealing with now you know we've just seen the evolution of them but this is kind of like where it started as far as the technological involvement with it um yeah that's so that's crazy to think that this is you're living it now but this was a plan you know about like 80 years ago so thinking about why she would have chose this one to be um the high priestess card so if we if we were to examine this as a actual tarot deck we would think that 
this card would be indicative of uh, change, uh, alteration, fluctuation. Uh, it would be a symbol of uh, the sacred magic, Gnosis, Sophia. Is, so it, that is would... it based on like the Rider Wade or whatever? Does it say that? I, I mean, they're all would... kind of are, right? Yeah, I mean, they're all based on the original deck, essentially, right? I'm just pulling but, up the original I, High Priestess to show in case someone's I, not familiar. Right, I would be assuming that she is accepting the standard tarot definitions when she made this deck, but that's just me assuming. I don't. I haven't read enough into her, her personally to know what her necessarily intentions are. I'm just... So you do have, like, there's the tower on the right, and then there's, like, a building on the left. So it's not quite the two towers that are on the regular High Priestess card, but it is kind of there. Right. And it's not... And, and this is with tarot decks. I mean, tarot decks don't have to... The imagery doesn't necessarily have to... You know, there's no dogma in, in the... in. There's doctrine, but there's not necessarily dogma. I mean, okay. you can alter the images. But as far as this deck, though, when you're talking about tarot, I mean, if there's any people that are, you know, pretty into tarot or whatever, um, I don't think necessarily that this deck is supposed to be legitimately a tarot deck, but I think at the same time it is. She's obviously knowledgeable of the tarot and of... Uh, of the symbology, but I think really she's putting the information. I would think more or less it's not the the symbology that she's using that's important on this deck, more so as um, what the card is portraying to what the card is, right? So what the archetype of the card is right. is is the way that I interpret the, the deck. You do have Which a lot, a lot of similarities though that I see the way it's kind of painted in the background. Yeah, yeah, kind definitely. Kind of matches definitely, her yeah. thing and the swirl kind of to match the crescent moon down here. You mm -hmm. have the square in the middle, which is the whatever that is behind the regular high priestess and the rider weight. That's the like a tapestry or something behind her or a door or something. The veil. The square is that what it is? A veil. Yeah. You got the square right here behind in the center of this hexen card. And then, so the the high priestess card is the moon card in, in the deck, right? Like the feminine. Yes. So, like each 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 card in the in, in the major arcana is gonna represent a uh, a planet past the past the first three, right? The Foolish Man, Hangman, Last Judgment. So that's Air, Water, Fire. And then so each one of the cards from one um, on is going to represent um, a celestial body. Now your screen is gray. Or, or, is it supposed to be gray? You're gray again. No, I thought you were showing. Hey. I was, but shade, then I, I came back. 50 Shades of Gray. <laughs> okay, so in, let's move, move on. Uh, Macy's Conferences. Uh, so there's several of these that took place, you know, kind of like a, you know, I guess this is the ecumen ecumenical council of, of the technocratic society that is evolving, right? Or what they would call their new world order. Um, so the Macy's conferences fail to rec uh, reconcile the subjectivity of information or its meaning and that of the human mind, but succeeding in showing how concepts such as the observer, reflexivity, black box systems, and neural networks would have to be approached in conjunction and eventually overcome in order to form a complete working theory of the mind. So, really, the whole concept is delusional from the get-go, that they think that with from a series of ons and offs, ones and ones and zeros, that somehow they're going to be able to replicate the human mind on a machine. And one of the main premises that they're trying to come up with is the ability to have a human judge be able to be fooled by a computer 
that's one of the main goals technologically. To, to have a that, what? Say that again. A human judge? Have a human judge be fooled. So a human judging something, an interaction with the computer, and not being able to know that they were interacting with the computer. Like legend from the Discord. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Computer ain't never going to fool me? Come on. <laughs> never. They're pretty good at it at this point. So, so yeah, that's uh, so that would be the first one up here on on the 420 stream. The High Priestess card, uh, the High Priestess card, the Macy Conference. So next one uh, will be that I picked out of the deck was three Empress, and the Empress card is Intel Agencies. Okay, let me. Speaking of intel agencies, <laughs> let me find that one. That's number three. Yes. Okay, here it is. I'm on her site, so I can. Yeah, yeah. They pull up. Yeah, that's where I took them from. So. And then, what are these? What are these like? So that's all the different uh, alphabet soups. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, so USA at CIA. Okay, I get it now. M16 yeah. in UK. I was trying to figure out what these like acronyms were for. Yeah. So these I mean, are I've, for each each uh, country or whatever. In, yeah, each intel agency of each country. You'll see that USA has a has a lot of alphabet soup going on. I think that's pretty self explanatory. <laughs> but yeah, let me pull all up the, the Empress and the. Rider weight too, just to kind of get go, us yeah. side by side. So where she's got like, what does she have all over her dress on this one? Is that strawberries or something? I can't tell what that's supposed to be. That's the correlation. I see those dots, whatever that fruit is, and then you have these dots kind of. Now, is this whole thing, someone in the chat said it's, like, similar to the Illuminati card game. Is this whole thing basically just a troll, or is there, like, a deeper message Illuminate, or, or both? Illuminati, well, it's somewhat similar, but pretty different, in my opinion. This is why I wanted to do this on, on the 420 stream, because the last 420 stream we did was on the Illuminati, Illuminati card game. Right. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the Illuminati, Illuminati card game is Discordian. It's meant to be sardonic. It's meant to be uh, sarcastic. You know, because essentially he rewrote the idea of what the Illuminati was, right? With the Illuminati trilogy. But this to me feels different because we're talking... this. Although the Illuminati card game is projective, right? Um, often you can view the tarot as being outside of timeline, right? Like the tarot can exist in the past, present, and the future. Because it's, it's about archetypes. Uh, but at the same time, this is about actual evolution of organizations related to how the internet came to be. So, I mean, it's not speculative. These are, each one of these cards is super informative. And you could go down a million uh, different research tangents just looking into each one of these cards. Which we're not going to do, you know, right now. This is going to just be like when we do the Luminate cards. It's going to go through these ones and and just look at them. You can form your own opinion. That would be the acceptable way for the way I, for a Christian to look at tarot cards. Is they're just you can just meditate on them. We're not trying to divinate anything from them, but I would say they're different in concept. Gotcha. I guess yeah. In the dress, you can see all the different. I don't even know what, what those are, to be honest. Is it figs? I wonder if it's supposed to be figs. Yeah. 
figs. Well, so the Empress is Venus, is, is what it represents. Um, but I feel like this one's pretty self explanatory I don't think we need to go yeah. deep into it. Yeah. But um, what's the next what's, one? What's strange, though, with the Empress, though, is how she would put the intelligence agencies in this card where in a in in a tarot concept uh that card would mean like happiness or pleasure or success um development so i guess i mean that would make sense i mean because i guess if we inverted it it's different for us but for them it would be success right so so next one uh that i picked out of the deck was justice one world government one world government so in that is a quote from burton russell which is one another one of these major new world order think tank group dudes wait for did you get it up on there i got it up Says war. So an, war can only be abolished by the establishment of a world government. Yeah, go ahead and read it. Bertrand Reynolds. All the researches of psychoanalysis. I can't read it anymore because it's like handwriting. It's hard yeah, it's to read. Handwriting. It's cursive. Nobody knows how yeah. to read that shit anymore. Cursive and all, analog clock, dead. <laughs> all the researches of psychoanalyst B. I don't know. Amor amorism and biochemistry. Yeah. Will, will be, be brought, brought into play. play. The Society of Experts will control. I can zoom in more. Hold on. Will control propaganda and education it will teach loyalty to the world government and make nationalism high treason the government being an oligarchy will instill submissiveness into the great bulk of the population confining intuitive and i don't know if that's the right word it's hard to read that writing confining I think it's an initiative. initiative initiative and the habit of command to its own members. It is possible that it may invert ingenious ways of concealing its own power, leaving the forms of democracy intact and allowing the plutocrats to imagine that they are clearly, is that what it says? Cleverly that they are cleverly controlling these forms. Gradually, however, as the plutocrats become stupid through laziness, they will lose their wealth. It will pass more and more into public ownership and be controlled by government of experts. Thus, whatever the outward forms may be, all the real power will come to be will come to be con concentrated, I think is what it says, in the hands of those who understand the art of scientific manipulation. Sorry, that was hard to read. Not because I can't read. It's just... It's tough handwriting. Yep. Yeah, it's just doctor's handwriting. That got through it, though. I mean, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> 1931, so 90 years ago. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff, it, we, it's obvious to see that these were concepts and ideas that were being talked about and discussed way before a lot of these concepts were even out. So, uh, why don't you pull up the 
Rider wait for that card and we look at that. I have quick. it up right next to it. The justice and he's holding the scales and the sword is upright. Okay. Yeah, so and it's interesting in the hermetic hermetic deck that it's actually called the fortitude card, but what does the justice no. card mean? I don't know enough about tarot. Um, just balance basically yeah balance uh homeostasis um balancing uh divine will with human will uh and maintaining that balance um so by the time you get to this card that should be the concept that you're you've uh got enough arcana where you can balance yourself uh, in this concept of human justice. Uh, although there might not be any concept of justice in the divine realm, but it's the combination of above and below, so the divine will and the human will is what creates what we would consider justice. But we'll see in the whole concept yeah, real quick, was this, are the numbers off here? Someone in the chat was saying the numbers are off. Wasn't this number seven in that deck? And I have up number 11. I don't know, I can't, I lost the screen. Yeah, you're gray again. You're gray, homie. You blew it! Hmm. Yeah, actually, I wonder why she did that. So her numbers have changed. She has seven. Hmm. Seven and eleven. That's why. Huh. That might be a truth drop in there that I don't know how to decode. Real truth <laughs> drop right here, man. Yeah, so, all right, well, uh... I guess let's move on because that yeah. one I don't understand. That's actually pretty good. Eight. So. No, she's got eight on there, and then that was eleven. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't. I didn't catch that. So yeah. Shout, shout out, out to, the to the chat. Yeah. All right. So. <clears throat> Ooh, cyber. Move on this, to one X. Looks, this one looks good here. Cybernetics, the wheel of fortune. Yep. Cybernetics, the wheel of fortune. Right. So. Like. I guess we were talking with... Now I'm thrown for a loop now that that one card's different. So, But if we talk about the Justice card, right, what I'm saying is uh, the concept of homeostasis or balance, that's like super pivotal in this in this in all this concept and in that Macy's conferences. And then we see now, right, with the green push uh, and the push for sustainability and stuff, is this idea that... Um, this concept that everything should be able and should be maintaining a, a, its own homeostasis. And if it's not, that there should be some intervention into maintaining that. But then at the same point, it's also a, you know, Excuse me. as above, so below about, you know, combining um, the divine will with the human will. Uh, So we got so cybernetics. Of, sorry, sorry, the, I didn't thought the, you were done. Yeah, the go. Yeah, the the. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say we got number ten, Wheel of Fortune, and on this deck is this cybernetics implications for engineering systems control, computer science, biology, ecology, political science, psychology, philosophy, and the organization of society. Now that sounds like my tagline here. I talk about politics, propaganda, psychology, and philosophy. Maybe I secretly work for CERN. Possible. You'll never know. Yeah, so these are all the influencing topics that are involved with all these people that are coming up with this concept that we would eventually know as as the internet, right? So essentially 
and we Wien- like, and Wiener's on this card again at the top. Wiener. They have his Wiener's quote. Wiener's the big Wiener's the big one. Dorbert Wiener, he is one of the he's the biggest dude in, in the biggest in Wiener. Biggest Wiener. Biggest Wiener like I said, in the game. I don't even know if she made a card for him though, actually. But no, he he is Wiener is known as the father of, of cybernetics. Which is it's one of those like convoluted terms that we see in all this kind of great reset stuff that we see with the current uh, uh, Wiener swab, what's uh, anal swab, Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab. We yeah, we see the same kind of you know fluff, you know, same kind of rhetoric that they speak, you know, just a lot of nonsense. But but these are the engineering ideas and philosophies that are going into what is perpetuating the uh, construction of the of what we would eventually call the internet. So it's not as if the internet just came out of nowhere, is that there's uh, groups and organizations and think tanks and societies that are constructing and weaving and plotting and planning for the impl- implementation of this technology into society in order to shift society. Yeah, it basically shows like a what is that? Like a crescent moon? Is this supposed to be like kind of like what I'm getting from it is like the Saturn moon matrix type vibe or something from it? Uh, Yeah, I mean in an extent you could. Um, There's like that ray or whatever going into the moon and then it comes out negative feedback, positive feedback. And then the... Just the general shape of the thing being like... Well, the card rep... In the traditional deck, the card's going to represent Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah. Interesting. So it's... <clears throat> it's about maintaining balance between between uh, good and evil, maintaining balance. Uh, and it's actually, it kind of is a contradictory card to the Justice card, because in the Justice card we have scales uh, in the Wheel of Fortune. It's obviously, we have a revolving sense of of justice within this card. So, in the justice card, things are kind of set and standard, and it's very dialectic. Um, and then in the Wheel of Fortune card, we kind of see how, even though we can have these set dialectic standards of good or bad or whatever, the Wheel of Fortune card kind of changes that because we can kind of see how it can be evolved. And the, which is strange when you look at the cybernetic card, where it's just a, a pie piece of the wheel. Right. Right. Which is a common theme in all these artists that do work for like CERN or Fermilab. And Fermilab in particular, like the 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 art installation when you drive into the facility is this big metal this big metal leg spider looking thing and it's called symmetry opposed. And this idea of a opposing symmetry is like one of their esoteric things that they put into their exoteric revelations. What's that? So or all, at Fermilab, you said I'm trying to look this it one's up. At, it's at Fermilab. It's called Symmetry Opposed. It's the entrance to, to Fermilab on, the west, like spider, on the west side. Spider looking on the, type yeah. thing. And that's on the west side and you entrance through Farnsworth Avenue and then Farnsworth was Phineas the guy Farnsworth. That, yeah, Farnsworth was allegedly the guy that invented the the television. And this is Fermi Lab. Yeah. So when you see it from one side, it's a different color, broken symmetry. So it's black from the entrance and it's red from the other side, broken symmetry. And this lady actually, I think she actually did an art piece called. That's why I was. She had an art piece, I think, called Symmetry Opposed. But you can see how it's broken. So it's like a shift in the timeline. 
Yeah, I see how it's red. Red on one side, black on the other. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like calipers that you would measure a taint with. Yes, definitely. That's, that's what I'm getting from <laughs> it. Um, have you been to Fermilab? Yeah. You get it? What's the vibe? Is it weird? Or is it just like sterile? Mm, I haven't been inside Wilson Hall yet. I've driven... I drove, I drive by it all the time. I mean, I live right by it, but, and then I've driven through it and taken pictures inside of it. What's um, the, what's the Atari building? You've been in that one? That's Wilson Hall. The, so you haven't been in the Atari looking. I haven't gone. Looks I like was like at the Atari logo. Yeah. 2020 happened. And then like, I, I haven't had a chance to go inside. Like, so you can go to the top floor in Wilson Hall and yeah, you know, I've made tons of posts on Wilson Hall because it's it, there's so much into it. But um, so it's built like a cathedral, like and there's all this. If you follow my "Welcome to Fermi Lab" hashtag or our reality is being conjured is where I cover all that that topic. But um, it's really an inversion of, and so that that's the obelisk in front of it. It's a Looks like the base of the Space Needle, kind of. Mm. Yeah, it definitely looks like the Atari logo. So you can go to the top floor of that. It's open. It was open to plug. I don't know how it is right now since post-COVID or whatever. But you could go to the top level, and then there's an art. There's an art museum that has all the artwork from uh, their resident artist, uh, and the one that I follow. That I've done a lot of stuff on was the Angela Gonzalez because she has some crazy esoteric artwork from Fermilab. So Fermilab really is the headquarters of particle science, although CERN is the one that gets the big name. But um, Fermilab is 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 the pinnacle of it, really. So it's a large, second largest particle accelerator in the world. Some would claim that it's actually technically the largest particle accelerator in the world. Uh, and that uh, CERN is, is a cover for that. And living in the area and researching it for a long time, I think they really have built a larger collider underground because of the amount of like uh, quarry yards that have popped up in the area where they supposedly would have had dug the tunnel for the new one. Yeah, so this is Angela Gonzalez's uh, images. She's just the Fermilab artist or whatever. So these are yeah. from like the 60s and 70s then? Uh, n these or are actually from uh, early 90s, 80s, 90s. Okay. So, yeah, and that's that image right there is the sun doubler. Which one? Because I think you might see it on a delay if you're seeing Yeah, it. I'm on a delay. There's a one where it's the circle and it shows like two suns around the... Oh, yeah, I see it. Ab ...above Fermilab. That one's called the the energy doubler. What is that? Uh, like the black sun or something? There's Fermi Lab down there on the right. Yeah, it could be. Um, and then these are images of all the weird kind of scientific experiments that they did. Um, but my favorite one is that cauldron one, where it's the yeah they got the, the guy in he's in the plague doctor mask. You've got yeah. all the Incan uh, deities. You've got the bats in the back. You've got the cymatic cathedral window in the background. Titarian and then the back technology. The background behind that looks like the World Trade Centers, but what it actually what it is supposed to be depicting is what's called the Chicago Pile Number One, which was the first nuclear reactor ever built. But you can see the same kind of vertical line construction that looks very similar to the World Trade Towers. And also very similar to the Max Headroom hijacked, hijack, uh, TV hijack. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me pull Which that is what I said before. Quick. Which I say that Fermilab is the one. And you see Fermilab is inside the cauldron. So you see the the Trevatron, which is the the, the collider. The Tevatron is inside the, the cauldron there. 
Hold on, let me go back to that. The Trevitron. Let me copy this so I don't lose my spot. Hold on. Oh, I see. So yeah, inside the cauldron is it, that's the the big circle. The yeah, that's the accelerator. Well, one of them. So it's multiple. It's an accelerator complex, right? So there's multiple in there, but yeah, that that's that's what it is. And then that little black thing on the bottom of that is that supposed to be the Fermi Lab building? Uh, yeah, I believe that's the Wilson Hall. And then, the and then, yeah, let me jump to that Max Headroom. Wait, let me let me open a new window with it so you can see the. So you're talking about these vertical lines on the back, looking kind of like the twin towers. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then there was in, that in Max famous Headroom, Max yeah. Headroom. They supposedly like hijacked uh, live ra live television signal in the what early '80s, I would guess. Mm -hmm. and, and then so never got caught supposedly so the um the accelerator at fermi lab is called the tevatron t-e-v-a and teva in hebrew means the ark and then yeah behind this max hedrum dude i'm playing it now you got the just the straight lines it's kind of wiggling around Right. So and so anybody that that was a, something that happened in the Chicago area, and headroom is a technical term for being able to control the uh, broadcast airways. Right. Whoever has the maximum headroom would be would be the only people that would be able to hijack hijack a TV signal like that. Have the power to do that, and then so. Fermi Lab is so Lucent Technologies, Bell Labs, their two largest laboratories in the world were located right next to Fermi Lab. One of they ended up selling one of the labs, the one that has the giant satellite dish, glass satellite dish thing on it. They sold that to Navistar, which is the people that make school buses and diesel engines and stuff like that. But the other one still maintained. But eventually, uh, Bell Labs sold to Lucent Technologies. Lucent Technologies sold to Alcatel, and then Alcatel sold to Nokia. So now the company is owned by Nokia. But you know, obviously, everything's in the Nokia brick phone. But Nokia is the uh, leading manufacturer of 5G, and that's still located there, right next to Fermi Lab. Let me just play. I'm going to play like 15 seconds of that Max Headroom. Like I played it before, but I got to play with the sound on in case in case you've never seen it. There's got to be somebody here that's never seen this, some kid. So let me play like 15 seconds here. And yeah, no, that, that's way before even dial-up or anything like that. It's pretty crazy. You, you, uh, I came back to the Discord and you're gray again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or was there more? Tried, was there more you wanted to get into on the, on that like cauldron? I still have that cauldron up too. Oh no, I, I think we can move on with with where we're going with that. We'll, so basically, you're Fermi, saying like somebody with Fermi Lab probably had something to do with that. Yeah, undoubtedly, I think the uh, somebody at Fermi Lab or Lucent or whatever, because this area, like we're in Naperville. I mean, at that time, like every top scientist in the world was living at Fermi Lab or next to Fermi Lab. Like literally, they for the very top people, they they set up. I think you'd even see it in the cauldron somewhere in the map. There is what they would call Fermi Lab Village. So like all the top top people literally had to live within the 
<laughs> within the actual facility. And they wouldn't let them interact. You know, there's all kind. Of, I can go on forever. That's a whole different, whole different topic. But yeah, a good little tangent there that most people don't know about. Everybody knows about CERN, but most people don't know about Fermilab. Uh, no, Jamie Costco shout out says so. It was a weird prank. Then they made it a popular character. No, it was a character first, and I think he right. just wore the mask to conceal his identity on the hack. That's how old I, I was. I'm that old that I grew up with Max Hedrum and Spuds McKenzie. But you would have needed you would have needed so much RF radio frequency headroom, so much transmitting power to be able to hijack that signal from Chicago like that. That the only place that would have been able to have that ability would have had to have been a laboratory around. Or associate it with Fermilab is it's, or there was some a bunch of people that worked for them that had set up some kind of private thing to do that. But I mean, it wasn't an amateur that was that hijacked that broadcast. It had to have been somebody that was at Lucent, Bell Labs, or Fermilab or Argon. There's the there's the other lab in Chicago land. It's Argon National Laboratory. So we. Chicago has two national laboratories. And then plus University of Chicago, which technically kind of really is a is a national lab, but that's where the first nuclear pile, first quote unquote nuclear reaction occurred by Enrico Fermi. Uh, and then Fermi is the one that goes on well, they name Fermi Lab after him. And people mu probably know the Fermi paradox about alien life and all that kind of stuff. And then in quantum physics, you have the trinity of of particles, right? So you have fermions, bosons, and then hadrons. And hadron being the, the god particle. I'm just pulling up a few pictures of that Chicago pile. So that's part of my idea on nine. I think that the twin towers were a radioactive uh, nuclear pile. The building itself was, and that's how it was able to to disappear and turn to dust so quickly. What what is? I don't understand what this Chicago pile is. It's just like. It's just like looks like boards, like two by fours or something, just stacked. But oh, there's supposed to be radioactive material in there. Oh, going, it's like uranium or something. Un undergoing decay inside of the. Oh, that so that's pile just or... like a, like a holding. Yeah. Thing for whatever's inside there. Okay. Yeah, allegedly. Who knows, really? Yeah, at the exactly. End of it. But, but yeah, that's the official story. Chicago Pile was the. Was the first one to do that, and they got the material from what's called the Mound Site in Ohio, uh, which is another national laboratory, and it's literally built on an ancient mound site, and they named it the Mound Site, and that's where they got the original uh, nuclear material to do the experiments. Got these these spammers just came back. What did we say? Yeah, no. Is anybody still listening to this shit? Yeah, there's 119 people in the chat. Shout out to the chat. And that I think we, I think about 40 of them are Russian spam bots. That's right. Get them stats up. That's right. That's right, baby. <laughs> I'll take them all. Those are what, send them super chats so we can buy some more <laughs> subs. Oh yeah, we mentioned the mound, Stephen David. To mention, I always mention them. I always mention the mound, and then the always comes back to the mounds. Yeah, it's literally called the laboratory is called the mound site, is what the insider term. For. I don't remember the exact name of the facility, but yeah, if you type the mound site national laboratory, it'll come up. And then in that area is 
and it's in the area around Serpent Mound, right? And then there's all these. If you've ever been to that area, there's all these other major corporations that are built up in that. Like a lot of big pharmaceutical corporations are built on mound sites, right? Like they literally find medicine. Like Johnson and Johnson is there in in Ohio, and they literally find medicines by digging in the ground where their facility is located. Like that's literally the backstory of how some of these medicines are created because they dug in a mound site and they found something in the dirt and that dirt was a great antibiotic or some shit. Um, Faith is me speaks in the chat says, do you guys know of the device like CERN in Canada near one of the great lakes? They're all over, aren't they? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the current project that is ongoing, the biggest particle experiment right now is what's called Dune, the deep underground neutrino experiment that's going from Fermilab and they're shooting the underground, shooting all the way to Dakota, to the Dakotas, to a lab in the Dakotas through, because <clears throat> one of the original experience experiments they did was they shot particles well is what they say they shot particles to a laboratory that was up near the border in minnesota near the canadian border there in minnesota um but now the big one right now is called dune right so they moved they moved all this insane equipment from they built it in cern they tested the stuff in cern the biggest one being the g2 mu muon uh, magnet detector and the Icarus, the Icarus project. So, and they shipped all these things from CERN here and they, they had to rebuild, they had to like rebuild all these roads to, and all kinds of stuff to get this G2 magnet, uh, to Fermilab. It's this giant red ring thing, right? And they tarped it so when it moved down the highway, it looked like a damn UFO, right? So this giant, magnet detector that they move all the way from CERN across the ocean across and drove it all the way across you know to the Midwest to Chicago to put this in Fermi lab and the other big one that I've talked about before was the Icarus project was a detector that they sent that they built in CERN and they sent back to Fermi lab and if you you know in the mythology of Icarus is you know he escapes from uh Minos's labyrinth where the where the uh Minotaur is. The Minotaur is in the labyrinth of Minos. And at Fermilab, one of the things that Fermilab is famous for is for the buffalo. They have a buffalo herd that lives on the grounds above the the experiment. So it used to be a big thing where you'd go and see the buffaloes at Fermilab. So Minos, directly related to Icarus, Icarus builds the wax wings to escape from the labyrinth, the underground labyrinth where the Minotaur lives, right? And then so when this thing arrived from, firm, from CERN to the Chicago area, the Icarus project, is when we had this weird rise in Mothman appearances in the Chicagoland area as the Icarus project that is about a man that can a flying humanoid arrives in Chicago area. Mothman, Chicago. Mothman. So that's my Mothman theory is that Shern ships some some Mothman in some Jurassic Park fucking shipping containers. <laughs> <laughs> They're bringing over the Mothman. Mm-hmm. And then the meat and the, the ridge and this so like I said, so Minos, King Minos, is in control of the labyrinth where the Minotaur lives. Yeah, you know, Icarus escapes from the lab the labyrinth with his wax wings. So the original project at Fermi Lab underground was the Minos project. Like so they interweave all this uh mythology into all the experiments. They say it's a sandhill crane, the Chicago Mothman. <laughs> That's what they say. 
I never seen him. I never seen it, the dude. It's just an inter, interdimensional Mothman. Hey, hey, Mothman. <laughs> What's up, Mothman? That might be some South Side shit. I don't know. I don't go down there at dark. I don't go to the South Side when it's dark, so. Um, it's an interdimensional NFT, Mothman. <laughs> What's uh? What's the next one? Let's go to the next one. Been on a Mothman, Mothman tangent. I like I like Mothman. EBT's doing a little celebrating for the holidays, so I hope everyone else is putting them in the air. All right, Mothman. Uh, next one. <clears throat> next one. Temperance. Arpanet. Arpanet, Temperance. Arpanet. Stephen, so, da Arpanet. Stephen David, I modded you up, man. I need you to to hit down these these spammers. Keep coming, man, because I got to pull up pull up the next one. These these spammers are hitting hard tonight, man. That's how you know this is the, what they don't want you to see. Reels for reels. The fuck? All right, so yeah, the next one was Arpanet. And that's the Temperance card. Yes, Arpanet Temperance card. So Arpanet is like the OG, the OG internet. So <clears throat> on my on my screen, you will see. Um, the original ARPANET logical map connection that connected all these different research universities together. I don't see anything on your screen. Are you talking about the card? Shit, I don't know. Your where screen's I'm... gray, but I have the card up if that's what you're talking about. My screen's gray. Motherfucker. No, I had a diagram of the actual ARPANET up, but I don't know where it's shown. Anyway, so uh, yeah, ARPANET is the like the OG internet that connected all these different research laboratories together. Uh, and then what I was trying to show, there's a map of, of all the locations. And anybody that's ever looked at some of the other like underground location maps and stuff, all these places line up uh, similar similar areas. So. But it just goes to show that the originally this was a defense research project to create what we would end up knowing as the World Wide Web, the internets. And this was is sixty nine. It says on the card the ARPANET, the early internet. Mm -hmm. What are they sending on ARPANET? Just like text or what? Uh, yeah, data packets and text and who knows what the capabilities of it. It probably wasn't wasn't very good, but yeah, and basically it's like a a data bus between these between these agencies where they could send data packets. However, they can disseminate the data packets when it gets to the other end. I don't know all the technical uh technical bits behind it um this was one of the first early what they would call satellite circuits involved with this as well there was a couple places that were connected not by actual physical hard line there were facilities that were connected by what they would said were satellite connections so hawaii was one of the early internet satellite connections and then there was like one or two other places that they were able to have uh, satellite connections. One is uh, like Epstein, looks like about Epstein Island out there in the Atlantic. And the other one's like uh, in the Bermuda Triangle. Creepy, bro. So, yeah. 
so kind of weird. And they did run some lines out halfway, like out into the the North Atlantic. There's actual physical lines that run to some facilities. That's one of the ones you could probably look in each one of these different facilities and like have insane stuff. But it runs basically from each side of the country. So from Maine all the way over. Basically follows the 33rd parallel is one of the main lines, it looks like. And then uh, the Dragon Line, which is the 30, 39th to 40th parallel, is where they chose to to run these physical lines to connect all these facilities, which, you know, is the same way where they put all the cities. So they all run on the same kind of, same kind of lines there. I don't know why I won't show that screen though. Um, faith is me speaks in the chat says, so I found a link a while back. There were reports of underground tunnels being used to collapse parts of the Mississippi river. And I followed it up to the snow lab device. Mm, I don't know about that one. That one's new to me. I never heard interesting. That. And then yeah, we, somebody else said you're just sharing one window. So when you click off of that PowerPoint, it's going gray. Because you're only sharing that PowerPoint through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discord. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. All right. I figured I was sharing just whatever's on this one screen. Okay. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh... So yeah, ARPANET, the OG internet. Next. Next. The devil. The devil. The devil. 15. Let me pull that one up quick. 15. The devil. Why don't you go ahead and read that when you get it pulled up? Where is it? That, that one's re readable. It's not handwritten. Okay, I will pull this up, but let me pull up the... The Rider Waite one, too. I'm sure you guys have all seen that one, but I'm still going to pull it up. So what, we just did Tempers. So, yeah, so, and then back on that one, the uh, ARPANET card. So in, in the examination of a tarot, you would think uh, that combination of forces, moderation, temperance but like if it was inverted you would have discord shout out to the discord yeah all right this one here the devil i'll read it real quick it says on the one hand the exploration of individuals ethical position within the collective activity of scientific modeling could point outside the instrumental logic of the world laboratory, because I'm wearing the glasses tonight. It's not laboratory, it's laboratory. <laughs> and beyond the notion of the experimental epistemology, is that the word? Yeah, epistemology. Epistemology, so okay. Toward base, your basis of belief. So. Towards an ecological understanding of the interdependency of living beings on the other hand it could lead to an infinite multiplication of clearly circumscribed and incom incommensurable world models open to manipulation by anyone with a superior understanding of the modeling process and its effects on the lives of those who engage in it this would be the path I gotta make it bigger here. Hold on. This would be the path that was massively taken by the entrepreneurial cultures of the new economy, giving rise to the highly sophisticated productive devices of the control society in which most forms of artistic creativity are now caught and instrumentalized for financial, ideological, and military purposes. That's Brian Holmes. 2008. Oh, is that talking about like the fourth industrial revolution or what? Yeah, definitely. That's what we're seeing that like, come to fruition right now. And they're big, they're going to weaponize the art basically. Mm -hmm. 
That's why they got to tell you in the movies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They can eat children's faces as long as they tell you. <laughs> in in a in a directed VCR tape that didn't even hit the theaters. If they tell you there, then they don't have any karmic consequence. So here's what the Golden Dawn would say about the Devil card. The Devil card is the Lord of the Gates of Matter. Irene, I. On a pedestal sits the fierce figure of Pan, with his hairy body, goat's head, bat wings, spiked crown, and flaming torch. His crest is the winged solar disk. The pentagram at his center is inverted, indicating dark forces. Chained to the foot of the pedestal are two demons, one male, one female, half animal and half human. At the foot of the pedestal appears the sign of Capricorn. The symbol of Saturn, ruler of Capricorn, at the top left. The fire wand is the energy of Mars. So war. Uh, and it can mean material force, material temptation, subordination, bondage. If reversed, it could be the opposite, though. Reverse of bondage, respite, and divorce. So you either go with the flow or you don't. I just notice how in the rider weight they have the the chains are around their neck, but it's not like a dog collar. It's not like all, I mean, you know what I mean. They could loosen these chains. It's just like barely on there. They could just choose to step out any time. Two chains. Let my chain hang low. <laughs> Do it wobble to the floor. That's why rappers wear chains. Decoded. Truth drop. There's a pee pee there too. You guys didn't see that. The peeps. He's got the bat wings. Bat soup. Oh yeah. Bat soup. And the woman there, she's just got some grapes. So she gets all her needs met as long as she stays in that chain. So you can see the direct connections there, really, kind of. Yeah. The, it's a direct metaphor there between the control society that they're building and... All right, next one. The tower. Tower card, what is that? 16. That's my number, man. I'm number 16. I am the ATT. What does that mean? That's my initials. That's why when Jurassic's always talking about the ATT. See, that's that's me. So the tower card is NSA and another alphabet soup agency that you don't hear a lot about, TIA. Total Information Awareness Program. TIA? Your Tia. Aunt, your auntie. Your Tia. DARPA. Insacom. Tia. Data mining. Real-time feedback. Spending. Internet. Cell phone. Phone. Financial. Airline. Right there. See? Airlines came up. That's why it is. Email. Banking. Everything gets fed right back to the NSA. I remember hearing about the NSA. I've talked about the guys that kind of got me into conspiracies way back in the day, probably mid to late 90s. And they talked about the NSA all the time. And they were like, everything you say in a phone, it goes to the NSA and record it. And so you say certain trigger words, like, you know, they would say some that probably would set off YouTube if I said them. They'd be like, that's, a, that's when they know to flag you. And I was just, you know, I didn't know anything about this stuff. I was like, man, these guys are nuts, dude. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, you know it's true, man. I mean, it's got to be. I think this one's kind of interesting, though, that that all these different things, the you know, all this different information is the lightning bolt in, in the Hexen Tarot. 
So we have all this private data, all this metadata coming in, and this metadata is representing the lightning strike that destroys the tower. Right. It's somewhat interesting. I, I don't know necessarily what she what she intends by that. I don't <laughs> what's is up our... what's up, Moody Bug? Moody Bug's in the chat. So, you know, the tower represents destruction of one system to introduce a new one. Yeah, does that is that kind of a theme in this deck that this is all going to I don't know if you want to say end badly for them, but I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I can't. I don't have a read on that. I don't. I don't know who it ends badly for. Yeah, I kind of know. got that sense earlier. I don't remember what card we were talking about, where it kind of seemed like it was hinting at like a bad ending. I took it kind of for for them, for the yeah. data controllers or whatever. But I, th I think so, but. The deck but goes. It's an inversion, between. right? <laughs> so, I feel like, yeah, it, it is. At the same time, it's like uh, the deck's very dialectical in it because I'm. Le I left out a bunch of other cards. We'll cover maybe some other time, but <clears throat> it proposes a lot of other figures that are oppositions, like Ted Kaczynski, like that are oppositions to this stuff. But it's also you get the feeling that these are like built in dialectic built-in opposition to to what they're constructing because they understand how systems work so they're introducing oppositions into the program ahead of time so that they can con try to control the oppositions within the within the scenario right yeah that's interesting to me with, with yeah. ted kaczynski and stuff um, to the, if you just showed up here too, we're just talking about there's this um, tarot deck, and it's called Hexen 2.0. We're kind of comparing it to some of the Rider weight and just just kind of going through not all the, not all of the cards, but just some of the more you know major Arcana ones. Just taking a peek, yeah. and then it's all few... about it's all about the like the how they would use the creation of the internet as a control tool, basically for you. Okay, so that's that one is NSA. Uh, that one would be cool to go more into. I don't know a whole lot about this total information awareness program. It's one I haven't looked much into yet. But that, that would, that's what I was going to say real quick is before we go on. I just want to say that that's what I've taken when I've looked into Ted Kaczynski a lot is you, you get to the realization it's definitely it's definitely not the guy they show you. You know what I mean? That wrote that that book. I mean, maybe he did, but. It's like a character, but then it seems to me that you can email him in prison and everything like that, and it seems to me to be a way to, that they keep tabs on these types of people. And like the the um, the book that he wrote or the manifesto or whatever, like you said, they get they they want to give you the answer because at the same time they're going to build this control grid around you. They probably do feel like they have to give you the answer to try to control the opposition that's what i got from kaczynski even before you talked about that card that's all i wanted to say now we're on to what quantum computing quantum computing now, here and comes AI. the bots we got bots coming on every time we every time we say the word quantum it's a different quantum i promise the star This this one's another one that's pretty interesting, uh, especially if you were to go into each one of these individual tangents coming off of it, right? So we got DARPA, Stuart Wolf. I don't know anything about who that is. Uh, subatomic particles in two places, uh, quantum positioning, dream sharing, uh, mental mental prosthetics. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Mind reading, entanglement. Uh, shout out to uh, Will Smith. 
ultrasonic headbands. I have no idea what that one is. Uh, subatomic structure uh, circuitry, it's like nanotech. And then obviously the ubiquitous IBM. Um, and then at the top, crypto, crypt analyst. Crypt analyst. It's one I meant to look into and I, I haven't looked. I don't know what Spintronics is. Obviously, we know qubits is how they're rating this computer power and this quantum computing. You know, I'm not I'm not convinced of quantum computing personally myself, but uh, I think it's interesting, super interesting that this this is the star card and the star card in the traditional deck is Aquarius, right? So are we entering is the age of Aquarius going to be the age of artificial intelligence? The, probably right or even yeah. even if even if it's not if they can get you to believe it and then they bring out a quantum computer overlord and say this thing can give you any answer it's going to save society you got to do what this quantum computer says or you'll be extinct. i mean it i'm totally not convinced of quantum computing i mean what they show you is obviously ridiculous they show you some fucking chandelier that some crackhead glued some fucking parts out of a scrap bin into. <laughs> that's some hanging chandelier, and somehow this is a quantum computing that's diving into unknown realms to come up with these calculations. And it literally just looks like some fucking shit, some dopehead hot glued stuff to a damn chandelier. There's no way it's an actual quantum computing. If you look into IBM Q, is one of the big ones. Um, yeah, they're ridiculous when you look at what the, you look at the actual image of it. There's it's it's obviously it's obviously a hoax. What they're showing us, whether there is something that is able to achieve quantum computing, I don't know. It still seems pretty out there that that would be an ability. Even the way that they explain that it works doesn't doesn't make any sense and has and that's the official explanation is it doesn't make sense but it works but i don't know artificial intelligence is one of those things that i think is a is a misnomer i don't think we're anywhere near anything that we could deem as artificial intelligence but like the start of this deck the macy's conference um the people involved with that that was their main thing is to be able to to create a computer that would be able to mimic human intelligence. But I think from the get go, I think we see that it's misguided because they're being able to try to reduce the human consciousness to a series of uh, ones and zeros, ons and offs, uh, which is still the same way that computers work. But supposedly quantum computer is this quantum shift where it's no longer dealing with ons and offs that it's it's calculating in this different realm and nobody knows really how it works but somehow it works and they're not really telling us what it actually can compute or what it can actually do the whole thing just seems like a scam to me at this point but perhaps they probably did think that it was going to be a possibility but from what i see what they show us it looks like an obvious obvious bullshit but uh, what do I know? I don't know anything about it. Well, you said airplane jet fuel ho hoax was bullshit too, so nobody right. nobody trusts you anymore. I made sure to lose all my credibility at the beginning <laughs> of the stream. So, uh, the star quantum quantum computing there. The age of Aquarius. Let's go to the next one. What's the next one? Next one is Ooh, the moon. moon. Transhumanism. The moon. And all kinds of yeah this this one sorry i don't one. 
I don't, I don't know how necessarily to break this one down, but I mean, we bio see, we ethics, some... info ethics, nano ethics, neuro ethics. What's this one say? Robo ethics, techno ethics, all kinds of stuff. And then like wheels <laughs> within wheels, like gears almost with all these different I'll kind of zoom yeah. in. So you guys can, if you're on the phone, I'll zoom in so you can kind of read what these layers say here. Look, we got two Fermi labs there on the Rider Weight deck. Is there? Let me look. Oh, yeah. One on each side, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I guess this is a bunch of transhumanism stuff. This R is stuff Raelism? that. Raelism? Raelians? No, that's the people that said they made Dolly the clone, the Raelians. Yes, yeah. The Raelians is in one of these. Techno Gaianism. So, like, worship of the earth. Tech, technical tech, and they do techno. Viking techno. Viking tech, techno. techno Viking, I mean. See, I he's it. all, it's all, it's all part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, there's so much in just that one card. I mean, I know, I know general precepts of transhumanism all that's about a lot of those i i geez you know you could you could break down each one of those topics and there's a lot this is the kind of stuff that back when uh uh what's his name uh days of noah used to be good on it this is the shit that he used to talk about all the time and now he just devolved into blue and yellow programming and stuff like that but you know, part, when of, I first... part of that, I think, is just because people are so dumb, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Especially as you get more and more subscribers, like the average person so dumb. But yeah, he used to go on all kinds of stuff. And the, I've been watching him for a while, and it seems like the last, I don't know, six months maybe or more. I don't know. But it's all like uh, Klaus Schwab, Fourth Industrial Revolution, <laughs> which, which is cool, but damn... Okay, what are you going to do about it? Mm hmm So, <clears throat> there's no towers in this card, as we're in the normal tarot deck, it would have towers. So, I mean, I guess that's that seems unusual to me. I don't necessarily know what that would be, what that would be alluding to, but... Uh, I mean, I guess you definitely see a progression in going down downwards, right? Like it seems like at the bottom you got cry, cryogenic, uh, cryonics, mind uploading, cloning, uh, which would seem kind of where we're gonna see the next like real push. But I don't think we're anywhere near those kind of technologies. I don't even think they're remotely possible. So do Mind these, uploading. Do you think these go from the top to the bottom, like li linear, mm. or is it like from the bottom to the top? It's got to be post-human. I don't know what some of the stuff is. Extroplanism. What is that? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I never heard that one. Basically, they want to control you because they're evil. They want to tell you about it in a movie. The end. Well, but at the same time, like, transhumanism is about, you know, about becoming badass, right? Becoming a trans transhuman? Yeah, yeah Mar you will become a, Mar a Marvel movie, basically. Superhuman, right? Yeah. You've... you've transitioned out of your weak human abilities and you've integrated with this new technology and you can overcome all these things and eventually you can you know elon musk is going to have mind uploading technology and you can go to mars and so just part of more part of the same same idea obviously it goes into all the different little sub genres and a lot of this stuff would be things that 
talked about here would be some, a lot of what the influencers and the cards that I left out for tonight would be the individual personal influencers in these ideas. And it's funny when you look through it, most of these people are like psychedelic act, you know, um, promoters. So psychedelics ties in with a lot of a lot of this and then the counterculture obviously and then you have the counter to the counterculture and so there's definitely changes in technology and in society and politics and all this stuff that is being you know brewed up in that cauldron there at Fermi Lab and being made into bat soup and everybody's drinking it. Now, Legend wants to know, where's the fuck robots? But you know that's what he wants to know. They're still unaffordable. They're coming, though. You yeah, Nasera Jacera, baby. <laughs> They're going to reset your debt and give you a fuck robot. Fuck robot for everybody. <laughs> you just fuck sit robot home with your fuck, fuck robot and a fucking Uber Eats bring your food to your door. <laughs> You won't be able to even or, stand up and get it. Or the drone. Dude, I uh, have you seen the Walmart drone? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that you posted that. Are they serious about they really going to be dropping fucking packages in people's backyard? Come on. We'll see. And, and that lady got soda pop. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was talking about this before. How the, like, the infant formula is like shortage right now yeah and i'm looking for it again you can't find it anywhere and i went on ebay dude these motherfuckers have like three of the big tubs of like similac for like it's like 300 bucks or something so if you guys want a good come up go find some similac <laughs> pro advanced <laughs> put that on ebay if you can find it i'm like damn there's one time the government should ever step into anything. It's scalping baby food. Sorry to sound like a statist, but damn. That's pretty bad. People are just buying out like Amazon or whatever and putting it on eBay. All right, I need a short intermission again. I got to pee again. Oh, man. So next card is the sun. The I sun. believe that's... All right, uh, I'll pull it up while you're taking your leak and go through it the sun and then we got one more major arcana after that okay let's see what this one is here ebt we'll be right back so you got this one and i'm gonna pull up the rider weight one again oops sorry i'm knocking my mic over Okay, so on this one you got here, anarcho-primitivism on the left, and on the right you have post-left anarchism in the middle. An end to industrial civilization founded 1965-1975, Fifth Estate Magazine. What the hell is that? Let's look that up. Yeah, EBT's always wasted, Moody Bug. Come on. You're not new here. You know that. <laughs> what is Fifth Estate Magazine? It says U.S. periodical based in Detroit. And what is it about, though? Come on. Anarchist fiction. Oh, is it like some anarchist? Divergent views of uh, shares an anarchist, anti-authoritarian outlook and a non-dogmatic action-oriented approach to change. Well, that's probably why you never heard of it. They don't want to promote any of that stuff out there. Any kind of real change. As long as you're just talking about the problems and everything, they'll promote you. But if you want to talk about the actions that you should take to change it, it will never be pushed out there. Uh, what else does it have on this? So basically, it's like a it's like a tent or something. Sun and moon under the tent. Fifth Estate magazine under that, and then there's like a hollow 
earth or something some underground cave type thing it says destruction of technology eradication of all forms of domination to me that reads as guns no institutions of hierarchy and control informal affinity based association rewilding i gotta read that again i don't even understand what that means informal affinity based associations okay that's one thing and then i think rewilding rewilding is a different thing maybe abolition of the producer consumer based society geographical social cultural imaginal autonomous zones the complete dissolution of abstract power the values and go and goals of those who produce and control technology are always embedded within it And then you have like a small tree planted and blooming inside of this like cave or whatever it is. Interesting. And this is the sun card. Where's the other sun card? I think I had it here. I don't know enough about tarot to say what the sun my wife knows the tarot. I don't know. But it is like, look, at things are like blooming, you got a baby. The incoming of like a the new, new life in here. It's like the incoming and building of a new society. Again, all based on like the writings attributed to Ted Kaczynski, a.k.a. the Unabomber. These are a lot of the same ideas here. And yeah, the card would represent like a new Aeon. Yeah. But what's weird is this is like against the other cards, right? <clears throat> yeah, pretty much, right? So... What you eating? Some, uh, I don't even know, some kind of meat the wife made. I don't know. <laughs> some meat. It. Some meat. Stuffing that meat in your mouth. That 2 a.m. 420 snack pack attack. Never whack. Uh, never whack. Black that. <laughs> never slack. Yickety yak. Don't talk back. All right. So did you cover the sun card? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I don't know enough about like the sun tarot. Just to me, you know, with the baby and the blooming sunflowers. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's... Like you said, you know, new, new Aeon. Yeah. Glory, riches, satisfaction. What's going on in this sun card on the um, Hexen deck, though? Because it's kind of like there's like a sun and moon underneath that tent. I don't get what that's supposed to mean. If it is even supposed to mean anything. And then I covered what that Fifth Estate magazine was. I'd never heard of yeah. that. I don't know what that. I didn't. Yeah. It, it just sounds. That? It sounds like a magazine on kind of like Ted Kaczynski's type writings. Like it didn't say him specifically, but it seemed like that kind of. The, what it's exactly talking about here, how you're going to solutions to change society, anti-authoritarian mm. and anarchist, non-dogmatic action oriented approach to change. Yeah. Yeah. That would sound like kind of a cause <clears throat> Alexander Dugan from Russia would kind of be the, his concept of the fourth estate or uh, the fourth political system. And it seems like the, that fifth system would be in opposition to, to to the fourth system of Dugan that Dugan proposes, which would be a post a post liberal, post fascist, post communist system. So what we're Tartaria, Tartaria basically. 
or what we're moving into now. So, yeah. All right, a new man. thing that we don't have a word for yet. So next one, next, next one. last last one in the major arcana that I chose was the world. The world. No, it just says WW1, WW2, WWW. Ooh, you see what they did there? Info war. Let me Boom. Pull, let me pull up the world. World. Wider weight. That was the hardest word for me to say as a kid was world. So they're, they're saying basically, which I guess I haven't given it much thought, but it kind of... To me, World War Three started with um, 9-11, but with this card saying World War Three would be the implementation of the internet, which which kind of goes hand in hand with the 9-11. Not that, not that there was one date the internet started or anything, but... It kind of feels like it, though, doesn't it? Not, I mean, shit. Yeah, it's like that time period, you know, late, late 90s is kind of when the yeah. internet came into everyone's home and got popularly accepted. Yeah, I yeah. remember... I remember downloading that Playboy picture just one line at a time. To... Car Carmen Electra. Like yeah, Carmen <laughs> Electra. Oh, my God. I remember talking all those friend, old ones. Talking to your friends on AIM. and Araya Giovanni. Who, who remembers that? <laughs> yeah, AIM. Yeah, they just pretty much... got They got you hooked, man. It's like a drug. You can not never go mm. back. You could never go... I mean, you could, obviously, but could you imagine now living without the internet the way it's just so easy to look up a recipe, look up a phone number, anything, everything, right there in the palm of your hand within moments? Mm -hmm. I can definitely remember the feeling of it not being so ingrained, though, from back then. You know? Yeah, like when you had to log on when it was dial-up. Yeah. And yeah, I guess with the integration of the smartphone is when it became like all day, every day. But it was like there was like separate internet time before. Mm hmm When your mom left. <laughs> <laughs> time to jump on that lime wire and give your computer AIDS. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we're all gonna go to FEMA camp soon for all the shit that we got off Napster from two thousand and one at some point. They could. There'll be there, FBI. there will be a Metallica concert there. At the FEMA <laughs> camp, at the Walmart. You have to pay to see it, though. <laughs> it's interesting that that uh, world card on the Hexen deck, though, there's really nothing to it. It's just black yeah, and white. I, you know, there's really no art or anything. And then compared to the world, red or white. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an intriguing one. It's simple, but it's profound at the same time and they are bringing that yeah the world war three that could be it just the the internet and like i said i i just literally said it like i couldn't even imagine living without it and that's that's how they build the the cage around you well i mean if they really wanted to lead everything into chaos at this point if they just turn the internet off then yeah it'd be bad it would be bad. <laughs> There's an entire generation of kids now that have never not been on right. the internet. Everything runs on the internet. I mean, it's hard to get hard to get past it. Like Gen X, I think would be able to make it because we grew up without it. But anyone mm. after Gen X, I think they're toast. I mean, obviously not a hundred percent, but I just think it would be such a. I mean, it would just bring everything to its knees if the internet just all of a sudden didn't exist anymore. It would it would take some time for it to get back off the ropes. People wouldn't have no idea what to do, and then but then you'd be forced to just get your information for the TV too. It'd be real a lot easier for them to control the narrative. Oh yeah, because they come because you know when it would come back, it would be like. <laughs> You know, they'd be like one channel, one yeah. internet channel. <laughs> in your own, in your own country, also Trump, like, like an intranet. 
All we're going to have is Trump TV and freevoice.io. That's it, man. <laughs> Elon's going to buy Free Voice. That's what I heard. Yeah, I heard that too. Hostile takeover. Here comes All the, right. Here comes the porn bots now. Watch out. Watch out, chat. <laughs> if you just got here, every time we talked about a certain individual, the chat got flooded with like porn bots spamming p- porn links or something. So got we still got a hundred plus luck watching this. Man, that's pretty good Man. for how long we've been going. How long have we been going? I don't even know. I don't even know. It's pretty good. Uh, we're we're just trying to make it to four hours and twenty. <laughs> Are we even close yet? What it, I think we started around eleven thirty ish. So twelve thirty, one thirty, two thirty, three thirty ish would be like four hours. Man, so you got like a whole, <laughs> got like a whole another hour. Where's the callers, man? Where's look at, look at this shit, man. Exactly what I said. You talk about that channel. You talk about a certain channel. Jared, Jared Board said it's QOC and Mothman teaming up. <laughs> That's funny. I've never been hit with these bots before like this. Yeah, literally never. Does this happen in other like channel? I've never even se- I don't really watch that many live streams though. No, it, it happens in other channels, but I've never it's never happened in yours. Never. And it's uh, like on cue too. Yeah. That's funny, dude. Weird. That's not weird. We know what it is. So what's up with the chat? What's going on with everybody? Everybody smoking. Yeah. 420. 420. Was that your last uh, slide there? That, that was the last of the major arcana. There, there's, there's, there's more of the minor. I got. There's quite a few. There's quite a few more. Just kind of click Seen through them. them. I won't like. I won't like bring up the right away ones or anything. Just want to kind of peek at them. Seven of Chalices, Utopia. Utopia. So we got gender utopia, economic utopia, religious utopia, ecological utopia, communist utopia, capitalist utopia, technocratic utopia. Nasera Jacera, baby, we're on our way. Nightmare utopia. Nightmare com. utopia. <laughs> Shout out to Shout Fenton. out to Ben. Fedton. He's in bed by now. So he what's caught, up? Ch- what's up with Benton and Jessica Jane? Let's go there, man. What's going on there? She com- she's watching the old videos lately. Oh really? Commenting. The ones yeah. that Benton is on, or just no, any? Uh, just any of them, I guess. Okay. I just thought it was funny on the D Live, you guys. If you don't follow the D Live, you're missing out. Um, we asked Ben jokingly about a certain member of the chat, and he just. <laughs> He went silent, man. <laughs> he wasn't even that silent when he was stoned. Yeah, he went full full uh, couch potato. Yeah. Faith is me said, I want your opinion on the Snow Lab device under Great Lake in Canada. It is in line with the Mississippi River exactly like that Edgar Casey map. Mm. What is it? A that's snow it. I don't. I don't know anything about. I never heard of that one. That's a new one to me. So, cool. And then they asked if we ever watched Static in the Attic. I've seen it a couple times. I think I left yeah. like a troll comment on there once, and he kind of left like a little snarky reply. And then I think I just never went back. Yeah, I know I've watched him before. I don't. I don't. Not, I don't remember any his content specifically. The, the the one I like, dude, is do you, do you still subscribe to that Josh Stone or whatever? Just the uh, guy with just the wild ass title. I don't even watch the videos. He just has like the wildest titles for like the videos. I don't know. I don't know if I remember who that is. Let me see if I can just pull him up real quick. It's like, I swear I don't even watch any of the titles or any of the videos. I just, I think he has hilarious like titles. I think his name's like Josh Stone. Is this him? Let's see. Maybe it's not. 
channel. Yeah, this is him. Uh, craters on flat earth are fountains of the great deep. That's that's nothing compared to some of them. Let's see. Let me go back a little bit. Dinosaurs are a hoax. That's pretty standard. Oh, he must be slipping, man. Yeah, after, after I hyped him up, man, he's got some regular... Before, he had some crazy stuff. The hell, man. See, I can't leave the chat now. Damn it, I knew it. The instant I went away, I knew this. Effer was here. I knew it. I could feel it. Well, I guess I can't go anywhere. So go ahead, go through the slides, because I can't. Surf. I've never had to mod before, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, when you know I mean, it's a good stream is when they send the when they send the bots. Okay, so next uh, next one I had up was Ace of Pentacles, uh, NBIC, which is the nanotechnology, biotechnology, infotechnology, cognitive science initiative from uh, Bill Nye, the science guys. NSF National Science Foundation. If the let's see, read it. if the cognitive science can think it up, nano can think it. The nano people can build it. The bio people can implement it, and the IT people can monitor and control it. U.S. National Science Foundation, U.S. Department of Commerce. An entire program for acting upon nature and mankind. New self organization, organization systems, technologies of control, out of control technologies. So, uh, controllable nanotechnology, biotechnology, infotech. So, that's where we're at right now. We're at Black Goo. The Black Goo? Mm hmm. Shout Intel out to the chat. Wait, Intel real quick. I got it. Can you guys see my Santa in the background there? Hold on. Santa. Santa says hi. All right, go ahead. It says intelligent machine systems that can generate here to unimaginable economic wealth, food, clothing, shelter, education, medical care, clean environment, financial security for all human beings. So we're going to be begging. We're going to be begging for the shit. But if they make it bad enough, well, yeah, where you can't get food or anything, they could, they could roll out anything. Huh? So this, uh, I had this on another slide, and I don't know how to pull it up right now. But uh, yeah, there, if you Google this, there's this report that you can read through. And I started reading through it a couple months ago, but it's the 2002 report it's called converging technologies for improving human performance from 2002 so if you just search that you'll pull up there's a pdf and uh, you can read the pdf from uh the national science foundation about the use of nanobiotechnology so it's one of those one of those rabbit holes I got it up, but it's it's just a boring PDF. Obama White House archives.gov. What's the deal with Obama now? When he wants like the new the new Joe Rogan Spotify <laughs> deal. <coughs> I haven't heard about that. Oh, I guess they're already on um Spotify, but they're gonna leave Spotify and seek a better deal. They want like the biggest deal for. I guess they have like a podcast or something. I've never heard of it. Obama and his wife. Mm, I knew she had some. I knew she was doing some kind of thing or something, but I didn't know he was involved with it. 
Shout out to Barack Obama if you want to come on the show. Yeah, they're they're they they've been building his new library down there. Like I said, on the south side, they broke ground for it and everything, and uh, they're in progress. They got billboards of uh, Michael all over the place down there. And the billboard says from the white ha- from the south side to the White House and back again. Kind of feels like it's a. Uh, Alluding to that, they're going to be back in power soon. Oh, they they'll be back. I think I could be totally wrong. That's like Jesus to the libs, Obama. Mm-hmm. They love him. Who else do they have? The libs, like if there was like a lib warlord, who would it be? Not <laughs> there. There isn't one. There's Obama. Is AOC? AOC, yeah. What up? You got another one? Next one was... You're on, uh, you're on gray again. How about now? No, I can see it. Okay, two of pentacles, the inner cloud. Uh, global the data. Inter- global data. So you see all our intelligence agencies... All feeding into, including Google, all feeding into uh, the super cloud. Yeah, and how dumb do you, Not probably not you guys in here now, but hopefully you're watching it later. How dumb do you truthers feel that trusted DuckDuckGo for all that time? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you use Google, bro? You gotta <laughs> use DuckDuckGo, man. And now yeah. they're finally coming to realize. Yeah, they no admitted difference. it. And it was pretty pretty obvious. That it was. Yeah, come on. Yeah. So, hey, but now back, let's tie this in. You can keep kind of scrolling through these if you want, but I want to kind of tie this into what we were talking about earlier. It was like how this internet was used to, you know, just bring out all these crazy random theories, rabbit holes, endless breadcrumbs and everything for people to chase. Mm-hmm. Was that just basically kind of the whole point of it to install a whole new? Is it is part of it? Do you think, um, like to have it how it was so wild west, and I guess you could still say it kind of is, even though we don't think it is, and just have so much crazy stuff on there that they got to bring out the next iteration of the internet where it'll be a lot more centralized uh, control. What what I feel like it is. And I've said for a long time is it's like a, it's a test, right? That most of the reason for all this is that um, it's just for data collection. So it's judging reactions and it needs to create as much emotional content as it possibly can to try to gather as much reaction data that it possibly can. Um. And that goes back to the beginning with that with the uh, Macy's conference and uh, the fellows that were involved in the early on creation of digital storage computing. That, uh, like I said, they wanted to be able to convince a regular human that a computer was a human uh, through interaction. So the best way to be able to make a learning machine is to give it as much information as it possibly can. It's like Johnny number five, right? It needs input. Right. Input. Number five. So, I mean, that's pretty much where, if this one, three of pentacles, electronic social engineering, I mean, that one says, <laughs> that one says a lot of it right there. So we got social media face- monitoring. Yeah, Facebook, QZone, I'd never even heard of that one. Twitter, Habu, Windows, Bibu, Tagged, Orkut, Gaia, uh, Flickr, MyLife, Netlog, LinkedIn, Friendster, MySpace, Social Media, media Monitoring, Cybernetic Systems of Intelligence, Gathering, Feedback, and Behavior Control. So if they... If they really, if that's if that's what they're doing, is building these sentient AI systems, the only way to be able to teach these systems is by to gathering as much much possible data as they could 
for all kind of social interactions because they're trying to figure out how the human brain works. And you've been uh, you've been feeding this thing for twenty years at least. At all, least all kinds of it knows all that nasty stuff you looked at. Mm-hmm. And yeah, see, and bottom CIA, Inqtel, Inqtel is like one of the big giant CIA corporations that basically runs all this stuff. You're gray. You're gray again. What the fuck? There we go. Now it's back. I don't know what you did. Great, gray state. <laughs> that guy was from Minnesota. Buzzy. Yeah. Oh Jesus! This one has all kinds of shit on it. Uh, five of Pentacles, internet government. And how does how does this relate then to what we were talking about earlier too? With like the O O E effect, it's just it's just a data collection and then just a real time gaslighting or something like that. It definitely could be. I mean, it that's, feels like that's it. A, that's essentially what they're trying to 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 engineer. Like uh, even like even that Alex Jones video that I put you were there in D Live when I just randomly found that live, you know, and then I showed it again on the YouTube and they just take it down like in real time. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's just like gang stalker, like a real time gang stalker, right? So and then like with this with the internet governance, right? Uh, so the big thing is what's called ICANN which is the governing body of the internet, right? Uh, controlled by the Department of Commerce here. Hold on. I had a slide for this specific. <clears throat> do, 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 Let's see. Where did it go? Fifty Shades of Grey, bro. Yeah, hold on. I don't know why it's doing that. I'll show you guys while he's trying to figure out his boomer tech issues. I had a different cover I was starting on. This wasn't it either. Hold on. Uh, I had an alt cover before I said, man, I want to make the... um. Fight Club was... <laughs> I just thought it would be funny to make that. This was the cover I was. Maybe I can I can still switch it on the. Where's the hex in one? What the heck? There we go. Which which cover do you guys like better? This one here. I got basically what this was supposed to be was like the internet's like. I gotta close all these things now so you can see it. It's just kind of hard to see. I think what was going on. There's just too much stuff going on. It's got the tarot cards there, and it's got, um... Oh, I know what happened is where I messed up. I accidentally merged these layers. But this was supposed to be, like, the... Like a wave, like the internet almost coming out. But then I accidentally merged it with this layer somewhere. And didn't realize it till way later. I could have done more with it. But anyway. Did you figure out your boomer tech issues? No, not really, but I can find what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, so the internet governance there it is internet I governance it. yeah so the yeah. yeah so there's an organization called ICANN um, that essentially is like responsible for uh uh all the infrastructure within the internet or whatever. Um, like with protocol numbers and domain names and all that stuff. It's all controlled by this organization called ICANN. I-C-A-N-N. The International Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Yeah. That's who you register your domains with. Yes. Yeah, and their motto is One World, One Internet. That's their logo. That's their logo right there. You're, you're the, gray. You're gray. Boom. That's their logo. Their logo right there. So these are some other iterations of the same group. Um, 
uh, obviously all these major corporations all work together with the cloud security agency we have the internet the internet engineering steering group uh the internet society the internet engineering task force the internet research task force um and then there's all these other these are like endless groups that all tie in with all this so you can See how all of this is all constructed from the top down, tip to butt. I mean, it's given to us on purpose. None of these, you know. And they, anyway. don't, they don't care what, like, information you're sharing on here either, right? And I don't look, so. right? No, they don't. Right there in the middle, root servers controlled, decentral. Decentralized open DNS. So <laughs> basically, there's one major corporation that controls all these domains. Tim, so it doesn't Tim matter. Tim Foyle just came back and said, code. Holy shit, we're still going. He, he was here when we started and was just been gone for probably went to sleep. Getting up for work right now. <laughs> yeah, probably. 420 stream, bro. This is bro. how the last one. This is how the last one went. <laughs> That's right. Okay, bro. Next. Seven of pentacles. Ah, seven of pentacles. The whole Earth catalog. Okay, this one's. This one's kind of crazy, but uh, so all these different organizations, uh. Basically, this is really like the primitive World Wide Web, right? Um, so, hey, as a way for I'm gonna I'm gonna piss real quick. So hold yeah, it down for a minute. Ancient waves, while you're here, just make sure no spam bot comes. I'll be right back. Go ahead. Yeah, we've been fighting off. We've been fighting off the porn bots all night long, coming after us hard, dropping all these truth bombs out here. Spreading the truth. Make sure you drop them super chats. Go ahead and go to chalk.com. Get yourself some of that shilajit. Um, use promo code boomer50. Promo code boomer50 chalk.com. Um, where are we at? Seven of Pinnacles. Whole Earth Catalog. So this is an early on inception of the World Wide Web. Stuart Brand, he's another one of these characters that's uh, tied into all these uh, uh, technocratic, uh, cybernetic, psychedelic fucking bullshit, MK Alter shit. Anyways, just an iteration of the uh, original internet. We can move on next is the Queen of Pentacles, which is the electronic surve surveillance. Okay, Web 2.0 is a major theme through all these decks, as you can see. Uh, this one's pretty complicated, but it's basically talking about data mining, um, building social networks in order to uh, monitor, maintain, and influence these social networks, uh, control and regulate uh, censored material in real time, uh, cloud surveillance of, of, of data going to cloud, um, setting up a biometric database. We can see now with like our phones, everybody had, uh, most new phones have gone to a biometric unlock for the screen lock, stuff like that. So, but the caption at the bottom is interesting because says in quotes going dark going dark is the fbi's code name for its multi-million dollar project to extend its ability to wiretap communications as they happen the project hmm. dates from 2006 and has been used oh can't even read what that word is uh from the rand corporation so many old school conspiracy theorists know the Rand Corporation well and booze Alan Hamilton to find solutions. So 
extend the ability to wiretap commu communications as they happen. This is what happens to Davy Crocker, like every stream. Every stream, they use this electronic surveillance. They tap in, they hear what he's saying, they shut him down. It's, happen channel. it's happening here tonight every time we say the, the word of the day. Michael yeah. Victor, here he comes. Get ready. Get ready, Tin. Yeah, get them porn bots. You just say Quantum or Michael Victor, and they, they're swarming. Swarming. <laughs> swarming. Two of wands. <laughs> Two of wands. Cloudo. The Committee for the Liquidation or Subversion of Computers. So this is one of those... This is one of those opposite cards in the deck, right? So this is a group that's against against technology. So it's like kind of your Timothy McVeigh, kind of Ludite kind of things, I guess. And I don't know much about this one. It's one I haven't looked much into. But uh, see this quote here is, We are workers in the field of data processing. I guess it's kind of like uh, an early on um, uh, anonymous, right? So... We are the we are workers in the field of data processing and consequently well placed to know the current and future dangers of data processing and telecommunications. The computer is the favorite tool of the dominant. It is used to exploit, to put on file, to control, and to repress. And so I guess there were several incidences, I think it may be even uh, terroristic attacks. Uh taken out by them that's one that i definitely want to look more into i don't know much about them but that seems uh rather interesting now what is what it, what do you know about the book that comes with this thing too is it just expand on these i don't topics? know I, I don't i don't know i haven't i don't know i don't know if she has it posted or available or if it's uh something you would have had to buy i don't know i haven't looked for it it's 500 on ebay Jesus. The deck itself is also 500. We've got to do a crowdfunding. Yeah, send them super chats. Let's get this deck in hand. I'll start like a GoFundMe. we got to get $1,000. There you go. And like I said, I mean, we're only, we're only doing a selection of the cards. So there's a whole bunch more in this deck. And obviously, there's a whole bunch more research that we could have done or will do or possibly... We'll say that we will do, but anyway, so uh, <laughs> Ten of Wands. ENIAC. Post. ENIAC. ENIAC, there you go. Anybody that's uh, watched Susquehanna Alchemy probably knows about the ENIAC supercomputer. Uh, uh, shout out Susquehanna. That was built out there in in, uh, in uh, Philadelphia, which is considered to be one of the first computers. Uh, ENIAC, like Enoch. Um, so these are the post World War II early computers, uh, ENIAC, UNIVAC, EDVAC. Um, these were these giant, like, room size, building size computers and stuff. So these were some of the early on ones. Uh, RAN corporations involved with them, uh, IBM, obviously, um, and then some of these other pivotal fi figures. Uh, John von Neumann's one of the big ones. Um, and we also have the in, in uh, Russia, there's a big movement on, on, on computers as well, the, the Soviet tertiary computers. Um, so yeah, this is the evolution of computers after after WW2 on the Ten of Wands card. If there's anything that that's, good one. that's interesting there to connect real quick. Shout out to the chat. What's going on, y'all? Send them super chats. <laughs> we trying to get we trying to get a five hundred dollar tarot deck. <laughs> 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 and, then, uh, and then instead of four hours, we can do like eight hours. Eight hours. We could do this. We do this all day if y'all want to pay for us to do this Listen, all man. day. Alex Jones, Listen. you got to call us. Listen, I'm done going to work. I'd rather just bullshit on the internet and get paid for it. There's people a lot worse that do it and make a lot more money than you do <laughs> going to work. 
<laughs> I know, for real. Some I'm of sick. these people suck, dude, and they make a livelihood out of it. It's nuts, dude. That's what I'm saying. I could get, I could get, I could get good at this, maybe. Yeah, dude. It's I just <laughs> got that somehow these people have like deals though. Like we were talking about earlier, Tartaria. There's like some network yeah. or something behind these people, and they approach you. Un- undoubtedly, Absolutely. undoubtedly, man. It's so hard to grow to grow a channel. I don't even understand. It's 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 hard, man. And whenever they want, they can just they can just control the algorithm, and or they do control exactly. the algorithm. They can just exactly. You could That's never ever break out. Queen of Pentacles just said that right there. Real time surveillance. <laughs> Shut it down. The they got the. Know. They got the Goyam No radios. They shut you down. Whatever happened to the Goyam No carry? She's back. She got. She got a. I. She's back on IG. You have to send me that. I haven't. I'm like five accounts behind on her. You got to send me whatever her new one is. Well, I was blocked for a long time, but. Oh. Or t- send her. Tell her to follow me or something. She did. She did a drunk live chat and. Oh, she's she, funny. She did a mass mass banning of just everybody for no reason <laughs> she's a train it wreck ha- but in a good way it, ha- it happens man yeah all right uh i gotta get some medicine you want to take you want to take benton's card here benton's what am i am i gray no you're good night of, night of wands go ahead i can't read it when you're on your thing but i can i can pull it up pull it up i'll pull it up Knight of what? Wands. Knight of Wands. Unabomber Manifesto. Oh, yeah. This is what I'm interested in. Then. Okay, go ahead uh, on that. Knight of Wands, Hexen 2.0. Now, I think whoever wrote that, obviously, it's very smart. You never know where they got that manuscript from, though. Let me see if I can find this Hexen. Knight of Wands right here. Here it is. Unabomber Manifesto. I'm too good, Bob. Mods. Mods. Where's the mods? I got I'm too good, man. You can't mess with me, dude. I can read and mod at the same time. Come on. This is like the first time we've needed mods. This is pretty cool. Like big time. Yeah, we're big timers now. Unabomber Manifesto, Theodore Kaczynski. It was called Industrial Society and Its Future. I think this is straight from his book here. It says, the psychology of modern leftism. Now, remember, this is written in like the 80s. The psychology of modern leftism. Feelings of inferiority over social socialization, the power process, surrogate activities, Autonomy, source of social problems, disruption of the power process in modern society. So these are just like bullet points or something. Um, how some people adjust the motives, or maybe this is like the, what do you call it, the table of contents. The motives of scientists, the nature of freedom, some principles of history. Industrial technological society cannot be reformed. Restriction of freedom is unavoidable in industrial society. The bad parts of technology cannot be separated from the good parts. Technology is a more powerful social force than the aspiration for freedom. Simpler social problems have proved intractable. I can't, is that the right word? Intractable. Revolution is easier than reform. Control of human behavior. Human race at a crossroads. Human suffering. The future strategy. The two kind of technology. The dangers of leftism. So whoever wrote the Unabomber Manifesto knew where this was going. Or it's given to you by the... More more than likely, it's given to you by the system itself because the system is the one that knows where everything's going. And so like we talked about the, or you saw it throughout this whole deck, it's basically about the balance between positive and negative feedback and everything like that. You see that play out in the life today when they say you, you got to offset your carbon footprint and everything like that. Not that that's real. It's a, it's a concept that they plant in there and they want you, 
you know, you even see it when you go to like sites like Etsy. It says this this uh, site is completely carbon neutral. They're able to buy like the carbon credits, like the modern day used to go to the Pope or whatever, and or not the Pope, but the church and pay for your sins. It's the same thing with the modern day carbon credits. And so they knew where society was going and then they gave you the solution and told you. Hey, hold up. Selling indulgences is a myth. <laughs> it's not a myth. I didn't call. Oh, wait, did he? I think he's talking about Ted Kaczynski in the chat here. I think just the TV called him the Unabomber. And um, what was I going to say? Got thrown off. The yeah, it's all about the balance and whatever the offsetting, and so they had to give you this manuscript early on in the takeover in the technological takeover to control the the future dissidents. And they knew who was like looking into this even way back then. Law of equivalent exchange, Pentagon says, perfect way to say. It. If you want to gain, you must lose. So, and uh, I think Kaczynski comes up at least three times in this deck. Kaczynski is also the hermit card. He's the hermit. And the other important yeah. thing from that book is the there will be no, you know, revolution that's not beneficial for the system. So they'll they'll give you like a fake revolution just to install the next iteration of their control structure right i think that's i think that's pretty uh insightful how that ties in why this would be why kaczynski is prominent in this in this deck of this technological progress and we got the checkerboard floor oh, that's how you know See, we don't have to know what this means. We just got to recognize it and then Move use it. Move on. <laughs> All right. Ace of Swords. Now, Cyber this is War. the cover of the deck right here. Mm. Cyber War. Info War. Shout out Alex Jones. Net War. And, and again, look at that. It's... It's you have got that the, same, uh, there was another card that had that same kind of thing before where there was that tent on top of it with like the hollow earth looking thing or like a cave or something inside of it but now it's like an island that's alluding to something and I, I don't I, I can't pinpoint it right now but yeah it's got that it's got that uh, orthodox uh, bishop uh Bishop Miter on the top of it there, though, too. Yep. See, this is what's happening to us now with the porn bots, right? We got encrypted communications, swarming, malware, uh, info leaking, uh, terrorist networks, anonymous networks, criminal networks, network revolutionaries, civil, so civil society activists, hacktivists, society of spying, Industrial systems, transport, nuclear, financial, power, food supply, government, cyber commands. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is this is, I and if we go back to the the sun card, right? World War Three is the internet, internet yeah. war. Yeah. Is the cyber? That's the next. That's the next battlefield. Is the cyber war? The war on that's your the mind. That's the kill switch for everything. And it's obviously all controlled from the top to the bottom. I'm ready. Dick to, dick to butt. Dick to butt, they got us. Right? And Legend's right there pegging us the whole way. <laughs> Legend, the AI. All right. Three of Swords. Everybody knows this one, right? MK Ultra. Yeah. Behavior control. Drugs, so, baby. 
drugs or what does it say? Military unwitting participants. Drugs. Testing of drugs on uh, on, on LSD. Yeah. So Eli Lilly, a uh, company from Indianapolis, we talked about in the in that uh, King at the Crossroads stream quite a bit. Um, Eli Lilly was the company that was responsible uh, for the these experiments during uh, the CIA's MK Alter experiments. And it's actually uh, Eli Lilly was the company that ended up producing all the LSD for the CIA in the use of the MK Alter project. So. Originally, like, a LSD was created, like, in a lab in Switzerland. It was, like, one-off kind of deal. And the CIA bought, like, this whole guy's stash. And then CIA went to Eli Lilly and had them synthesize the drug, and they were the ones that produced it. So Eli Lilly, like we said, obviously was responsible for the polio, the polio jab. Um, they made the the... the Second boner pill, Cialis. Uh, they were the ones that make the one, first ones to synthesize insulin. Um, they make a synthetic um, adrenochrome. Uh, mm. Regeneron right Tasty. now. And then they they also are competing with Pfizer for an al the new alopecia medicine. So, <laughs> Brought to you by the Grammys or what was it? The Oscars or whatever the hell it was. The Oscars or whatever. But see then, but this all directly ties in. So all these, so as all these cybernetic and kind of um, technocratic transhumanist think tanks are going on, these things are all also being heavily influenced by the psychedelic movement, right? So we got like Larry and all these type of other people that go with them, Sagan and um, Carl Jung, all these people in in the uh, psychology movement um, and then all these pushing of this drug counterculture which was all perpetrated by the CIA initially because a lot of these guys early on that we were talking about uh, like um, Wiener uh, back to Wiener from the Macy's conferences there's this idea that these psychedelics can create this kind of uh, Pivotal, pivotal change in humankind to be able to kind of restart the system of the cybernetic and uh, re-engage into homeostasis of the environment. So the pushing of this psychedelic narrative goes hand in hand with this push for uh, transhumanism, neo-Gnosticism, um, the new age theosoph theosophy all these kind of stuff it's all tied in as kind of really kind of one grand narrative moving towards uh this nightmare utopia and also in the official fiction theodore kaczynski was involved in mk ultra yeah yeah, because Kaczynski was from Indiana, right? Uh, originally, I think he was from Terre Haute, if I remember correctly. But we, it, it's crazy because you look at it, there's um, so many of these like figures came out of Indiana. Because um, Indiana was really this MK Ultra hub because between, uh, between Eli Lilly and Indianapolis... And then you had Purdue University in Lafayette, north of Indianapolis. And if you go back on the cards earlier, earlier on, we had uh, in ARPANET, uh, when we talked about ARPANET, one of the early internet uh, systems, Purdue is one of the main universities that's tied into that system, the ARPANET. And then Purdue becomes a big MK Alter Research University as does in southern Indiana, the uh, IU, Indiana University, becomes a major MK Alter Institute. It's where they establish their um, uh, institute to study sexual behaviors in, in IU. 
Eli Lilly's making the drugs to fuel the counterculture movement. Uh, and then Purdue is involved in some really crazy stuff because at Purdue University is where the sentient world simulation computer actually is. So a lot of a lot of what we're talking about here eventually ties into that is to then that's eventually was their ultimate goal of creating from this Macy's conferences that started the deck was to be able to create the sentient world simulation there in Indiana. But then you have all these figures from Indiana that are being brewed up like Jim Jones and um, uh, Manson. I think Manson had a stint where he stayed in Indiana or whatever. And that's when he got crazy. And there, all, all these people came from Indiana and you could tell where all these research labs for MK Ultra also were. Which I think is part of what like um, that show Stranger Things is talking about. And actually, in 2020, I did a show with Ray and KB. Shout out to Ray and KB on Event Horizons on On the Wake Up Radio. And I actually, I just talked to uh, Cindy earlier today. I'm going to re-upload that and I, I'm going to put some images to it and stuff. But... It was a super cool talk about what I'm talking about right now, about how a lot of these CIA, MK Alter programs, what it is on the ground in Indiana and how it ties into uh, the show Stranger Things. And they just recently, I guess they're coming, they finally are doing the next season of that, but it looks like it's pretty stupid. I don't even know if I'm going to watch it, but. Hi. So. <laughs> Talking about KB Visions, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out KB Visions and Ray. Ray was ahead of his time. This dude named Ray. Ray. He did these live streams and cover. He'd wear like sunglasses and the the mask. But this was in like 2018, when yeah. way before the mask. And what mm. was what was the name of his page? It was like We Are the Mind Virus or something like that. You're the Mind Virus. So he had a channel called Mind Virus, and it was he was wearing a mask while he talked in like 2018. Whatever happened to yeah. that dude? He was in the chat earlier. Was that was that Ray? I was wondering if that was him. I don't know. I you know I my gut tells me it is, but then with Ray, I don't know because there's like six million fake Ray pages. Yeah. This that. Uh, yeah, it's a click. There's a whole click. Shout out to Ray though, because I love that. That <laughs> I used to look. There was some great, great live he'd, streams. He'd be back like in playing his guitar and like crying. And <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's entertainment, baby. That's what I want to see. Yeah, they're good. I don't even, dude. I don't even know. I last time I watched an IG live. <laughs> yeah, is Jackson still going live on I, IG? I don't know, man. I don't even watch them. Any. I don't. It seems so. It seems so. Two thousand eighteen, right? Yeah. We got to bring that back, though. We got it. We got it here on YouTube now. This is where the big boys play, where you get this, the porn bots sicked on you. The this <laughs> porn porn spammers in the, the chat. Cybernetic tonight. porn spammers from from Purdue University. Or oh, uh, and, Penn State. Well, oh, so it, well, just a, just another tidbit though, because that ties in. No porn bots yet, but porn bot Purdue University is where um, Hugh Hefner's Playboy airline flew out of Purdue University. That's it was main airport. So they're moving. They're moving MK Ultra sex slaves through Purdue University with his. Uh, CIA funded Playboy airline, and with his underground tunnels to the Playboy mansion. Yeah, because the first one it was in Chicago, and I, I think there probably is a direct connection underground between between uh, Purdue University and Fermilab, undoubtedly. Yeah, how would you ever know? I mean, I think it's pretty much admitted that most of the way that there is, but I don't. Not all it's uh, let out, but 
And then they they someday they'll just like reveal it all and they'll say Elon Musk did this with the boring company. Right. In record, he sold a in couple, record time. <laughs> he's he sold some flamethrowers and all of a sudden the the dude like dug every tunnel tunnel six billion miles of underground tunnel because he sold like six flamethrowers. And something. he's gonna drive you to Mars. He's gonna fly up there. No yeah. problem. That's what I'm saying. You're gonna, you're gonna get. There's gonna be a next pandemic. Elon's gonna make the vaccine. You're gonna get a free cyber truck and a free Neuralink when you take the vaccine. And then you're gonna be able to volunteer to go in the hyperloop to go to Mars to build Tesla electric vehicles to send back to uh, Earth to save the planet from global warming. But you'll never let, go yeah, anywhere. He'll just be in <laughs> Siberia. Yeah. Well, let's get to it, man, because the holding phase is weak. Let's just get to the, the revolution already. The Giga Gulag, the Giga Gulag factory for Tesla. I think we made four hours and twenty minutes. Can the chat check? I think we've made the goal. Can we check? Are we done yet? <laughs> just Wait, blast no. through them quick blast no. through them okay so uh nava swords interplanetary internet crazy one we're not going to talk about it right now uh knight of swords ibm again the interplanetary network internet but the last one queen of swords drones birds aren't real bam bam, <laughs> bam. Bam. The Nano hummingbird external and internal surveillance aero environment and DARPA USA. Google it. It's fucking it, it's real. Google everything on that card. They're all real. Bam. The Birds fuck do you real. think, people? You think this thing, skinny body, long arm, can fly like that? No. Wake people. your ass up. Wake your ass up. You dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> Got more of them. Got more of them. Damn. See, I just okay. ban them, and then they come back with, like, it's like the exact same name and avatar. People think I'm, like, not banning them or something. So in the chat, man, I appreciate you guys if you made the whole stream. Uh, how many people are here right now? I'm trying to... 120, 129, 130 people. Uh, 60 bots. 50 thoughts. Shout out to the chat. To everybody say nice things in the chat. God, God bless. bless. <laughs> what was that last slide that you have there? It looks like you have one more slide. Oh, that's just a stock. Stock. Uh powerpoint thing well that's it yeah stock slide filler filler killer shit she is that the second four hour 20 minute stream ooe both on cards name somebody else doing it Hidden hand. Communist. <laughs> I got all the triggers for him. We got it. I thought it was pretty good. I'd like to I'd like to find that book of the that goes with them all. Yeah, yeah I, I ain't mean, paying no five hundred bucks. Shout out, there was a couple super chats in the appreciate you. It was Got she, your like back bear and tin. Appreciate you guys. She's got some cool other stuff to um, go and check out. But I mean, even this shit, we only did a we only did a few of the cards, and each one of those cards, some of them, some of them were pretty crazy, pretty pretty crazy. Reality breakdowns, Goldilocks, truth drops, one giant Mandela. Yeah, do you think um, you think Mandela plays into any of those cards? 
look at the color of my lighter right now. Oh, shit. It's a green lighter, man. It's not just any Whoa. green. It's that look. shade of green. Hold up. Wait, it changes. Green. Oh, green. shit. Damn. Oh. Every... <laughs> Every time we talk, there's a green box around us. Not just any green. Yeah, I seen that. I seen that. I'm glad you caught that. Damn. We just got to use that for our power. That's right. To worry about yourself. Question in a tuning tuna fork. What's this guy saying in the chat? He says, Dream of Mirrors, it's in Russian. Use Chrome. Oh, okay, wait. Dream of Mirrors says, The entire Tartaria mud flood story started from the same creator of No Forest on Flat Earth. Mm. I'll, I'll believe it. I don't know if it's true, but... I don't think so. I don't know. I think it, it pulls on a lot of things. I mean... It's just kind. Of, it's kind of evolved, or de I mean, the de evolved, of, I should say. Yeah, I mean, like the Book of Mormon talks about the same shit. So, all right, guys, you were here for the second biannual four-hour, twenty-minute live stream for four twenty, and uh, hold up, wait. I think that'll do it, man. Can I go green? What'd you do? Oh. No. Can I go oh. green? No. No. Oh. Wait. <gasps> Hexen 2.0 Tarot is the name of the deck. If you got 500 bucks to blow, send it to me. But if you don't, go buy it on eBay. And there's, an, and there's a book if you have $1,000. You can also get the book that goes with it all proceeds go to cern That's to right. further to further the research to give humanity more great things got any last words end of video